Today on EV Journey, I'm very happy to announce that we've got a very special guest, and this is Chris. So if you're into the ID3, Chris has got spies within Volkswagen, apparently, and he always gets the news before anybody else does. And his channel is really good and it's really fun. So I'm going to leave a link below to his channel. So the way this is going to work is we can ask some questions to um, Chris and also I'm going to answer those questions as well. So you'll get to know me a bit better and Chris a bit better on our opinions about EVs and the ID3, etc. So Chris, a little introduction about yourself. Okay, so uh, like you said, Chris from Battery Life, I started the, the YouTube channel, I think July last year. No, two years ago. Can't even remember. <laughs> I think two years ago. And before that, I had a, a different YouTube channel where I was doing uh, uh, covers of metal songs. I play guitar and I did this since, I think, 2000. 2006 so for a very long time and I have 20,000 subscribers there but music was something that got off my list that I wanted to do and EVs were just coming in and now I'm only doing this and don't make videos with that had to do with music anymore I rarely play guitar anymore anyways and EVs are just an amazing fun thing I love to drive them and I thought I share the experience and since the ID3 was not even announced when 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 there were rumors that this car will be coming I was interested in it when uh, uh, fully charged drove it last year in January in in South Africa I was hooked I thought I want this car and it's just perfect for me because it's the size I want the power I want the price I want it fits me very well that's why I'm ordering it yeah, so I think uh, I think you're basically very similar to me because I saw it on fully charged as well and fell in love with it, mm. and um, everything was perfect. So um, just a little about bit about why I started the YouTube channel. One of the reasons is to get a bit better in front of the camera because sometimes at work I need to be in front of a camera now, and it's so difficult. It's so difficult. It's much more difficult than it looks um, to try and be natural in front of the camera. Um, also. I was looking at a lot of YouTube channels where they had um, range tests, for example, from Oslo to Trondheim, you know, with winter tires <laughs> <laughs> at, at minus five degrees. And, um, and and then they've got battery chargers that are like 350 kilowatt hours. So, so I was thinking more for Portuguese viewers. I mean, those are fun videos to watch. They're good videos to watch, but it doesn't really say anything to Portuguese viewers. So I want to, to look at it from a more Portuguese perspective. For example, first we need to know if can an EV drive from Lisbon to the Algarve? Can I go to Porto? Can I go to Madrid? And um, really, you can only really do those kind of tests when you're the, yeah. in the country. And and more, I wanted to compare it against the petrol car than an EV car. I think if you're in the EV world, it's very good to watch those channels where they compare everything to a Tesla or to this or to that. But if you're driving a petrol car, that you come at it from a different perspective. So I want to try and give a perspective of somebody coming from a perpetual car to an EV, the problems, the good things, the bad things, and a um, very Portuguese perspective where we've only got 50 kilowatt charges if we don't have Teslas. <laughs> That's but, a very but also, good idea. Yes. yes. So, so that, it's very good to be specific about uh, when a lot of people are living in Portugal and Spain and they, they need to know how is it to drive an EV there. You're totally right. So, do you do your channel in, in English or in Portu Portu Portuguese? Portuguese. Portuguese. Uh, so, um, so, uh, so, I'm actually English, but I've lived in Portugal for 20 years. Okay. So, I can speak Portuguese, um, but I prefer to do the channel in English. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, the same for you, because you do your channel in English, not German. It because there are, are billions of, of German YouTubers about electric cars. And, and, and I thought, first of all, I'm more comfortable speaking English than German in front of a camera. And uh, I, again, I wanted to show the, the, the world what Germany is like with EVs and not show Germans what the term, how Germany is with EVs. They already know that. So, and, and, and I think um, um, when you look at Europe, when when you, uh, outside outside of 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 Britain of Great Britain, there's there's barely any uh, YouTubers that do videos of EVs in English. It's Bjorn Nieland, and 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 the rest is in England or Ireland or something. So, but uh, the rest is doing it in their their language, 
and, and that's why yeah, I, I think that's an excellent it. point actually because I think there's a couple of people doing it for like southern European countries but it's all in their own language and there's um there's there's no I haven't really seen anyone even in their own language in like Spain or Portugal or Italy <laughs> doing something the way that Bjorn Nieland does it or that you do it or it's, it's normally um very more you know more like a top gear or fully charged type thing yeah it's restricting I mean when I do it in German, three countries can understand me, and in English, even most of Germans understand me. And I see it in my YouTube uh, analytics that, that, that the second, so so uh, England, UK is my how my most viewers, and the, the next is Germany. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. They they always complain. That's the most amazing thing. So, so all over all over the world, nobody says anything, but the Germans complain that it, when I make uh, when I uh, do a mistake in English. <laughs> so, I'm, so, so I'm not very happy with my English because my sister says my English is always getting worse and worse since I've moved to Portugal. <laughs> and, then, and then my Portuguese is not brilliant, so I think by the time I'm like 60, I won't be able to speak any language whatsoever. <laughs> I'll just mumble. So the next question on the list, why do you want an EV? I think you've asked it slightly that it's fun, but is there any more reasons for why you really want an EV? Um, I was interested very early, many, so I would say three, four, five years ago, I was interested in EVs um, uh, just because it, it looked like technology on wheels and technology was nice and driving was nice. And then I went to a dealership very close by to get a, the old Hyundai Ionic to drive. I didn't film back then, but I just went into it. He, he explained to me everything and I said, okay. And then I went off the lot, I would say 200 meters and I was hooked. Uh, this is what I want to drive all the time. I, I, I put my foot down and, and the, old, the old Ionic I think had less. I think it didn't even have 100 kilowatt motor. I can't, I can't remember anymore. But for me, the, 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 the concept of uh, uh, flooring it, the instant uh, uh, torque and, and no sound, but accelerating and no gear change, I was, this is what I want. And since then, I love driving EVs. And every EV I drive, uh, uh, um, I like. <laughs> because it's way better, it's way better than my stupid gasoline car I have in, in down there it's horrible <laughs> so I'm gonna go straight into the next question then why do you currently not own an EV <laughs> uh, because <laughs> so far I either could not afford it or it was wasn't the car for me the Kona last year um, was very close and and my wife and I talked about it and we calculated how much it will cost and she doesn't care about electric cars she just wants to go from A to B, she doesn't care how it's done. And so I was okay um, if I can get an electric car and it will not cost us more every month than our gasoline car right now, then it's okay. And with the Kona, it didn't work then because the Kona was more expensive and the ID3 wouldn't work either. But now with the YouTube channel, I earn a bit of money and it's now even. <laughs> Oh, sounds good. So, so, so with that, uh, uh, with that, we, we settled that, and she she sees the that it, that the, the YouTube channel works, that I, I'm getting stuff, and 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 it's growing, and that that uh, car makers are are calling me. I get invited to 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 things with the ID3 and and stuff like this, and and she 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 also understands that the ID3 is not just important for us to drive, but also for the channel, and that. That's why she's okay, and she, she's in peace with his mind with the whole thing. <laughs> she's she doesn't like it. She doesn't care, but she's okay. <laughs> so so that's fantastic news. I I'm really happy that that your YouTube channel is actually working for you. I mean, it's 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 good. So I'll um I'll answer the same two questions. So why do I want an EV? So um all the air quality and eco thing. But I don't really want to go into the air quality and eco thing. But obviously, that's a big part of it for me. The um, the petrol price. So I actually have a four-year-old Citroen Cactus C4 with a panoramic roof. It's a rip curl, so it's for surfers like me, uh, with the <laughs> stickers on the side. Whoa. And, uh, um, and I absolutely love that car. <laughs> so I, do, I don't. It's only four years old, but to me the car's new. I don't <laughs> need to sell the car. I don't need a new car. It's just the problem for me is the gears, because gears now they really annoy me. And the fact it's petrol, I I don't mind the fact that it's petrol, 
because I think it's got quite a good acceleration, you know, 9.4 seconds for petrol cars, not bad. Yeah, it's, really it, 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 it's comfortable. I've had it for four years. It, it's, the build quality is good. It's not got any creaks or anything. It's like it's new, as I said. But one thing that really annoys me, I've got a very small apartment in the Algarve, and we, I live just south of Lisbon, about 20 kilometers south of Lisbon. So we go to the Algarve a lot in the summer at the weekends. And in Portugal, to drive from here to the Algarve, it's 290 kilometers. But just in road tolls, that's 50 euros here and back just in road tolls. Wow. So sometimes we will like only go half on the motorway and cut across the countryside, which takes us longer, or we just go on the road tolls. And then with the petrol cost, that's like 60 or 70 euros, so probably about 120 euros for a weekend trip to the Algarve. And it's only less than 300 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do that for three or f you do that for two weekends, that's 240 euros. You do that for three weekends, that's um, 360 euros. It, it, it adds up. So um, one of the, and also I have to travel to work every day, not now, but <laughs> I do. Um, and that's 120 kilometers a day. So that's 120 kilometers a day round trip. And you know, that's petrol prices are expensive. And so I'm doing, uh, I'm doing at least, not, I'm on the normal month, obviously I haven't driven anywhere recently, about 2,500 kilometers a month. So just on the, oh. For forgetting air quality and all of that, just on the the, the petrol price, the EVs are better and everything. It just yeah. makes perfect sense to get an EV. Why don't I currently own an EV? Well, the first EV I nearly owned was the Nissan Leaf, you know, the new one, the 40 kilowatt hour one. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, it came out in Portugal after it came out in the UK. So somebody bought one in the UK. Um, and I don't know if you know the site, I think it's called James and Kate or Kate and James. I know, her. I know them, yeah. Again, English. <laughs> yeah, they're very good. They um they did um they did a trip to Scotland uh, with some other bloke who and basically the kilowatt leaf beat the 40 kilowatt leaf because of the battery management system problems. And so you know at the time that was about 40,000 euros, and I thought mm, you, you know the car seems to be a bit of a joke to be honest. I really think the Nissan Leaf is is, is, is a joke as a electric car. But I think it all all depends how you're using the car. If you want to drive with the car a thousand kilometers every month, then it's not the car for you. If you do that once a year, I think it's fine if you charge a bit longer. Because a big big I see lots of new Nissan Leafs when I drive to Lisbon. There's lots of them driving. So I think for the going to work and back daily ride is good. But for me, if I was just going to get a car for daily going back to work, and I'd get an E-Up. I wouldn't spend that much money on a Nissan Leaf, to be honest, you know. Yeah, that is for me. And, and, and then the, the Kona came out. So they didn't have prices in Portugal. So in England, the price was probably under about 40,000 euros the first time it came out. So I went to a dealer in like October, and he said, yeah, there's eight um, Konas coming to Portugal, and you can have one if you sign up today. So <laughs> I said, I says, yeah, yeah, you show me the dotted line. How much is it, by the way? And it was 46,000 euros. And in my head, I'd got it would be 40,000 euros. Mm. And um, so I, I went home and thought about it. I mean, they only sold the top of the range one in Portugal, not the lower yeah, one. Premium so that's, so it's the premium one. Um, and, and I looked at them in the shop. I looked at the petrol Kona and I thought, well, if I wanted a petrol car, this, I wouldn't buy a petrol Kona. You know, I could happily buy a petrol Golf. But I couldn't buy a petrol Kona. Kona. The, the buttons looked a bit old for me, and I don't like this big center console. And the petrol one is like 21,000 euros, yeah, and the other one is 46,000 euros. And you're thinking 25,000 euros more expensive just for the electric one. It's, it's, it's a lot of. I know, but 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 the, the Kona is is special. I mean, what I told you, I have the Ionic down there. It's 30, a 38 kilowatt hour battery, and the Kona has a 64. That's just, that's almost double the range. The, uh, and, and then the premium with all, all the features it has. I think the price, uh, it, it will age very fast. So when the ID3 comes out, the, nobody will get, will get the Kona anymore because the, the technology in the ID3, it's just, it's just, it's not Tesla level, but it, it's getting there. And Kona is still barely app support. So I, th I think the, the Kona, they need an update where they have a, a car that is just electric, not a petrol car changed to electric soon. But I think you've answered slightly the next question as well. Why did you order the ID3 first? <laughs> uh, I was interested in the car. I wanted to have it, and I, I, I want to be the first. That's why I wanted... Uh, the, the whole 
the whole thing, the hype that they made, not extremely like Tesla did with the Model 3, but it worked on me. <laughs> I wanted to be the first. I was there when the timer went to zero and I wanted to order and the server didn't work in Germany, the payment server, and, 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 I, and, and I had an iPad, my phone, and I think the computer up here, all always on that side, and I pressed refresh on all three, and that, and then I don't know three hours later I got in paid and I had the the pre-booking, because I wanted the first wanted to be the first to get that car. <laughs> so, 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 so it's exactly the same for me. I wanted to be the first when I was looking at the pre-bookers event. I think it was on May the eighth or ninth or something. So they said you can buy it now. So I kept going to the Portuguese site and there was nothing. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh. and then and, and like after half an hour i was kept pressing refresh it came up and i managed to uh, and i got my thousand euros down and i, I think i must have been the first person in portugal like uh, yeah, <laughs> it was um so so it was the same yeah, yeah I, I definitely want to be the first i i don't know i think there's something special about having just the letters first written on the car and it being it's different. stupid i know but but and and i like how they're doing it I like that what I, what I've seen at the at the Dresden ID3 pre-booking event and and what they said and what they're saying now, a, a lot of people are skeptical with the ID3 and if I can't drive that before I buy it, I don't want it. And I was I don't care. I want it and I want it before all the press people and all the YouTubers. Everyone can get the car and then when you get it, it's already been talked about for for two months. Nobody cares about the car anymore and I like that Volkswagen is saying no the customers get the car first and then they go afterwards when the first edition is out then uh, dealers get a car for a test drive and press people get the car I like that way better <laughs> yes but um, um, my only worry with this is it will go to my dealership they will hang on for it for a week and do like 10,000 kilometers in it <laughs> <laughs> nah. yeah. No, no, no. Not, you get it right away. Yes, yes. Um, so I'm, I'm going to jump to, a, this brings us on to another question in the front. I, I don't know if you saw the last um, next move where he was walking around the factory. It was in German, but I managed to get mm -hmm. the subtitles. Yes. For I, 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 uh, I skipped a bit through it. I didn't watch all. So um, he gave me the idea, but as it was subtitled, I don't know if there were some German subtleties I don't understand. They give the idea that apparently there's going to be 250 cars just for the employees, for a thousand employees. So probably exactly. they'll be on a rotation system, the 250 cars before them. And he gave them me the idea that he himself would be doing a test drive. No, 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 no. He's, and he's not getting one. No way. I asked Volkswagen, don't worry. I asked them and I got uh, I got the answer. Those are still prototypes right now, and uh, unless the new, the newest software and they start delivery, the the cars are prototypes. And to drive, uh, you, you can do a, a prototype test drive on a track on on a private track. That's yeah. what we did in Dresden. Maybe he he did this. He he can do this. That's possible. But on the road, you're only allowed if you have a prototype license in Germany and it's hard to get and costs a fortune. fortune. Oh, because, I, because I thought if they're giving them to 1,000 employees... They, they do, but they all have that. Oh, they all have that, do they? Have that. I'm pretty sure Volkswagen is paying for that because they do that with... This is, I'm pretty sure this is not the first car they're doing this, but now we all know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For public. No, no, because I'm a bit disappointed because I was really looking forward to you doing um, a YouTube video yeah, on the ID3 in June, on you know, a proper on-road yeah. test. I was really looking forward to that because, I mean, if you found something really bad in it, like the Nissan Leaf, I don't think that's going to happen because, like you said, they've invested too much money into it. Yeah. But um, they, 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 they give me some warning. No, nah, I don't think there will be any. Maybe, I don't know, maybe a few weeks before delivery, it's possible that they, they, they updated the first, I mean, they have to update cars and then they go to the next car and so on. And of course, the first car is done and thousand cars later, it's a week later or so. So it's possible that some people are driving a first edition and then a week later, all the rest will come, something like this. I have no idea if they do it like this, but right now it's all prototype and, and if you don't have that license, you're not allowed to drive. I asked VW and that, that was the answer. If you have a prototype license, we can get you can get into that gamble where they did the lottery who gets the car. Uh. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's a bit of a disappointment for me. For me, but anyway, that was. Uh... <laughs> I really looked into it, 
you have to know everything about cars. You have to know how to handle a car if, if there's something wrong with the car, how to break in dangerous situations, and you have to do a real, it's almost a, a racing license. So it's, 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 it's two different licenses and you have to have them both and then you're allowed to do that. But um, it, it might be something worthwhile for you because then you can be the first to drive the ID4, the ID5, <laughs> the ID6. <laughs> uh -oh. that's, that's a weird thing. There was, there was a plan. So something like with the ID3, what, what uh, Fully Charged did, the same was planned for the ID4 in March. But the whole pandemic, I think, uh, screwed that all up. Because my, my contact in Volkswagen tried to get me in for me to drive the ID4, but Volkswagen said no. <laughs> we, we, we want real journalists there, not some crappy German guy who speaks English on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think the real journalist car reviews, they don't really give you the, the answers. I think so too. Um, I'm a petrol car driver and all I want to know really is range at the moment, you know, perhaps I'm wrong. And, 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 and I want to know that it charges and, you know, there's no issues. And yeah. if you look at the, if you look at the standard journalists, they don't really tell you that. I mean, the standard journalists don't go and do 1000 kilometers in it and test it or, or they don't test it at charges. They, they, they just give you an overview. Oh, look, this lot, it's got these lines. It looks pretty. Yeah. It's a great car. And you don't really understand. That's, that's basically it. I mean, I, I like fully charged a lot. But it's yeah. the same thing. They, they love every car and they show the, the overview of a car. They're not testing anything. They're not telling you details. And even Björn Nieland. Björn is amazing, but he does his tests and that's it. And, and I always try to do a test and then show the car in detail, show the instrument cluster, show the screen. For someone who's really interested in that car, he can then learn everything. And now that I'm getting press cars and I have the car a bit longer, can drive a bit longer, I know this stuff. And then I can yeah. say, okay, this is nice, this is works like that, this works like that. If you like that, then this is your car. If you don't like that, this is not your car. No, no, I, I think that's great about what you're doing. One thing with Bjorn Nilon, I think he, what he does is great also, but um, I don't think he has much respect for money. Like he was doing a, a review of the ID3 Max and it could be that cars are a lot cheaper in Norway because they don't have to pay VAT the EVs, oh. um, but it but it was like if you're going to get an ID3, you have to get the Max, you know, because it's got all this stuff. It's, it's like he it, it discounts the cars are slightly. Um, Bjorn's thing is um, he's interested in some cars, but he's not interested in in all of them. And you notice that. So for example, the ID3, he's interested because it's something new, but he 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 would never want that car for himself. So he looks at it and says, "Oh, that looks interesting," and that's it. And and people like us, we ordering the car, we're totally freaking out about the car. We know want to know every little detail, and that's why Bjorn made one or two videos about the ID3, and that's it. I mean, I I spent three hours watching a live stream about some golf manual with ID3 written on it, with some. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's definitely yes, true yes. what you say. Yes. Um, next question. If money was not an object, which yeah, yeah. would you buy? Um, I, I talked to that with, with uh, some other people. I think uh, uh, um, it would be, well, if it's money, no option, I want three cars. So, yeah. so the, the, no, that's the tiniest car ever. So, so an E-Up or a, a smart, e, e, smart EQ, I think, is the electric smart. The small yeah. one, um, then middle one would be e, would be Model S, and it doesn't have to be performance, just just the, the 100 kilowatt hour battery, and then the the the, the sporty one would be a Rematch, Rematch uh, C2. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> so, the mega sports car with 40, 1800 horsepower. I don't know what. Yeah, not, not too much for me. No, no, I, I'm sure. <laughs> and 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 not and not because it's 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 uh, electric and amazingly powerful. I just like Mate, the the boss of the company. He's in there with so much heart, and 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 he's 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 uh, it's it's like it's his family, and and the car is something special, and that's why. <laughs> so so for me, I would have to keep my ID three because it's like the practical car. <laughs> but I would want the new Fiat five hundred e La Prima with the. <laughs> Have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah, for, for Portugal, that's nice, yes. yes I'm not into the, convertibles. Well, it's, a, it's funny because I hired a Fiat 
once um, and it was a convertible and it was a Fiat 500, you know, the petrol one, and it was terrible on the motor. So I'd have to go for the Fiat 500e, but it's expensive. It's as expensive as um, ID3 really? first or even more so. Really? I don't know that much about the, 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 that car. I know the old one that only had, had type 2 charging. About the new one, I don't know anything, battery size or or anything. I think I think it's something like 38 kilowatt hour batteries, a range of 300 uh -huh. and something kilometers. So it's... um. If you get that battery in that small car, when the Ionic that I have down there has the same battery. And it's a, it's a big car. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the Zoe is small and the Zoe can get a 50 kilowatt hour battery, no? Yeah, that's still, it's true. Yes, yeah. That's true. But, but, but in fact, they've got three unique cars. So they've got one by Giorgio Mani, one by Bulgari, and one by Contel. And the Bulgari one is like orange, but there's only one of each. And they're going to auction them off and give the money to charities. So it'd have to be one of these ones, the special oh, one. Okay. So yeah. that's quite a nice touch. That's nice. Yeah. So, but, um, but um, I think I told you before that I've never actually driven an electric vehicle. So, really? Yeah, never. Yes. So why are you buying? You should to You should definitely drive one before you order the ID three. Really? Uh, maybe maybe it's not your thing. You I, should. I, you I, should I, do I, it. I, 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 well, I I have driven a a hybrid car because I once owned a Honda Civic hybrid, but that wasn't a plug-in or anything. It was just like um, you know, a really weak hybrid for the petrol engine. It was petrol all the time, so it wasn't the same thing. But um. I'm I'm sure I'm going to love it. I'm just I'm just risking. You, you, you should you should get an EV. I don't know, rent one or whatever, just over the weekend and do your trip. What you said before, just yeah. to see, uh, because uh, you have to to take in account even with an EV. So when you drive and you have to charge in between, for some people they can be amazingly annoying. So so if if after 200 kilometers you have to charge for 20 30 minutes. Some people, they're like, no, this is not for me. I don't like that. And some people don't care. Well, my understanding is, so we get, we get onto this, is that if I buy the ID3 and my house in the Algarve is 300 kilometers away, and it's mainly motorway, on a 50 kilowatt charger, I will need to stop for 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less, you know, to get there with a, like a 10% charge or 20% charge. I don't, I don't know what your opinion on that is. But in our petrol car, when we go there, we always stop for like 20 minutes on the way anyway. So... Uh, oh. Because we, you know, the, the child wants to go and play in the park at the service station. We like to have a little rest. So, so I get you, but still, you should try because when you drive an EV for 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 a bit, not just for an hour. When you do it for three days and you take a, a bit of a trip, you know this stuff. You you know this stuff that is amazing. Yeah. That you say, wow. I, when you go back to your petrol car, and you're like, what the hell is this clutch doing? Why do I have to shift gears? Why why do I even have to start the car? What is this? And why does it make noise? Why did it vibrates? But also, you you will notice that you want to charge somewhere, and your battery is low, and the charger doesn't work. It will happen, and then you're frustrated, and and then you have to think, do I want that? Do I want that stress in my life? Right now, I, I, I'm pretty sure in Portugal it's, it's, it's a bit worse than here, but even here, the, the guy who brought me the Ionic, he called me and said, I'm sorry, I will be late. Uh, the, the CCS charger, the, the triple charger here doesn't work, only the Type 2, and this takes long with Type 2, 7.2 kilowatt charging, so it will charge a bit to get to the next charger, and then I come to you. If, and this will happen. With, with, with the first point, it's very hard for me to hire um, an EV in Portugal unless it's like I can. I think I can hire a BMW i3, but you pay by the the minute. If you've got something like Lisbon city centre, <laughs> so, so, so yeah. So so like I could probably like an hour's worth um, okay. of driving it. But um, but I could go and like test drive. Um, not test drive, but have a drive of a Model Three because it's only like 20 kilometres away. The Model Three. Um, dealership but but my worry is i'd get in it love it so much i'd do something stupid like buy it straight away <laughs> that is good model 3 is an amazing car yes yes i think so uh, yes. but uh, it, it, also again drive it i i know no i mean model 3 when i drove it last sunday it was amazing it it's amazingly fast it's amazing it charges amazing it's amazingly efficient but I drove the Ionic t uh, today and just drive-wise, how, how, the, how the ride is, how you feel like in the car, I prefer the Ionic. The, the, the Model 3 was, was, was very harsh, so bumps in this it was, was very sporty, 
and also the seating position is very low and very laid back you feel like you're you're in you're you're I don't know in 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 a plane and 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 in the Ionic it feels and it's also lower in the Model Three. Oh, yes. I, I feel I feel more comfortable with the ride how it, how it works like how you're driving with in in the Ionic. So so drive wise so every day to go to work where it doesn't matter that you have four five hundred horsepower and you can charge with hundred ninety kilowatt. If this doesn't matter. I prefer the Ionic over the Model 3. So, so, so there's probably three things here I don't like about Model 3. I've never been in one, but this is just from my preconceptions, is that I don't think I'd like the lever stroke vegan seats. So to me, these would just get hot in the summer. I'd prefer fabric. Me too. Yeah, also yeah. also a point that now the Ionic that has fabric, I prefer that. That's true. Yeah, that they, yeah. fee, they feel, it, it's not about that it's vegan or real leather. That's not the difference. It, it's just uh, the, the, the fabric on... on I didn't like it too. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So um, then the second point is it's too big for me. I prefer a hatchback. And apparently in the ID3 you can get more banana boxes than you can in the. In the <laughs> not that I need to put many banana boxes yeah. on, but it could be. But size-wise, it's it's not that much of a difference as you think. Oh, okay. uh, when when you go to the measurements, it's maybe a 20 centimeters. That's the whole difference. And it, it's, it's, it's mostly the, the front, the, because the ID3 front is very small and, and Model 3 is bigger for the, for the front. Yes, yes. Mostly that. Yeah, the harsh wide won't be good for us because my wife has back problems, so uh, yeah, harsh it's... wide. That the seating position and the harsh ride, that, that, that it was okay for a day, but, but to go to work every day or, or for a long trip, uh, no, I, I prefer this one here. And and the, the e-golf and the ID3 when I drove it felt felt similar. Yes. So uh, the thing I think I like about the the, M, the Model Three is a panoramic roof that just looks amazing. It does. And then, you know the tablet and the tablet. I think. That yeah. Just... But but what I noticed driving with the panoramic roof since it's it's so dark and that it doesn't get too hot in the car, you don't notice it at all. You're not like looking out. Oh look at this! How much view I have. You don't notice it. If it wouldn't be there, if it would be just closed, I I wouldn't feel different. In the, in the Model X, I can understand because the front glass is going above your head. But with the Model 3, where you have a normal windshield and then the glass starts a, a bit above your head and then goes behind and it's so dark that you barely notice anything. For, so for me, it didn't make any big impact. So I don't need that. I would never get the ID3 with one. So you're talking about the Ionic, but the Ionic is like 40,000 euros in Portugal as well, making it the same price as the ID3. You know, for the smaller battery, I'm not sure it's worth it. You know? That's true. That's true. That's what you, I think. The, the, the good thing here with the Ionic in Germany is that it starts with, uh, with 35,000. And if you want the premium, I think it's 42 or 43. But Hyundai is giving 8,000 euros incentives on the car. So 3,000 comes from the government and they give 5,000. So you get it 8,000 euros cheaper than eight years of warranty on everything. That's yeah. amazing. Like, and and even uh, then 12 years on rust and uh, five service things or something so if you buy the car for for eight years it, or you drive it for five years five years and then you can still sell it with warranty that's just amazing yeah 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 that's something always good about korean cars yeah. Yeah, that's, what they're that's, good at. that's a big thing so i mean id3 has two years and that's it yeah yeah warranty typical standard yes yes so um, apart from the battery, but the battery yeah, warranty doesn't seem to be that, that, that good anyway. Yeah. Um, so what's your expectations for the 90 kilometer hour range test for the ID3 first, you know, in, in good, perfect weather conditions? The, the, the problem with that is I, I'm, I'm not that good with data. So Björn Nieland yeah. has a chart with all, all the data. So I, 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 I've copied it here from him. So really? That <laughs> because <laughs> to, to try and work out how far to get in the ID3. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so a bit better data. So right now I only know two cars. I know yes. the EAP and, and, and the Ionic now. now. And I'm surprised. I, I can tell you that now the EAP was more efficient than the Ionic at higher speeds, which is totally weird. It shouldn't be, but it was. I dropped... Yeah, and, and, and I drove the, the E up in March when it was still cold. So what was it, five, six, seven, eight degrees. And I drove the Ionic today at 25 degrees without the air conditioning off. And I had the, the consumption, the E up consumption at 130 was the Ionic consumption at 110. But 
I still have to review all of this. <laughs> this is just in my head. I, maybe I mem memorized it the wrong way. But I think that the EAP had 13.6 at 130 kilometers. Maybe it was at 110 and it's exactly the same. <laughs> and I'm totally wrong. I have to look at the video again. But this, this is what I know. So around 10 to 11 is what I've seen in the EAP and in the Ionic. So I think that the ID3 will not be more efficient than other EVs. This is not its strength. The strength of the ID3 will be okay efficient, but better charging speed except for Tesla. Yes, yes. So 100 kilowatt charging. And I think with how that they learned with the battery technology from Audi, and they also did uh, battery preconditioning with heating and cooling of the battery to get the good charging speed. I th I'm pretty sure when the, the car comes out, it will start to, to charge with that 100 kilowatt very early and will hold it at least till 60%. So I think that the strength of the ID3 will be the, the, the long distance driving with charging 100 kilowatt to 60% and then go on. Oh, I hope you're right because that would be fantastic news. Because yeah. because because I'm I'm hoping that I can get 400 kilometers at 90 kilometers an hour, but I don't know if that's a bit of wishful thinking. I'm pretty sure Apparently, you can get that. Yes. I'm pretty because sure. Because for me that yes. would be perfect. Because uh, so so far when you watch Björn Nieland's video, every car that has WLTP range, he can he can beat that with the 90 kilometers an hour test. And, and, and I think if I know that, that will be a safeguard. For example, if I do need to get to 300 kilometers in the Algarve and it's busy because everyone's coming back from the Algarve for the weekend or if there's a charger problem, yeah. I just say, well, I'm just going to drive at 90 kilometers an hour. It's going to take me a bit longer, but I can get home. You no, know, it's like a, exactly. yeah, it's a yeah. safety thing. And, yeah, and, I'm, sure. and, I'm, and I'm hoping at 120 kilometers an hour, because that's the speed limit in Portugal, um, that I can get 250 kilometers. I don't know. But we we'll see. Uh, in, in Portugal, yes. In Germany, when it's when it's wet or when it's a bit colder, no. No. But, yes, but, yes, yes, yes. I understand that. I, I think ID3 uh, at 130 kilometers can do uh, above two two uh, kilometers an hour. Can do above 200 kilometer of range. Oh, that'd be that, perfect. Without breaking a sweat, I think so. So I hope so. No, no. I, 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 I think. I, I don't even think. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> If if the Audi e-tron can do it with with that big battery and the big bulky car with horrible um, drag, then the ID3 can do it. Yeah, I'm 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 expecting the ID3 to be quite efficient because it's been designed as an electric car from the ground up. It's it's not like these e this e208 or the Corsa e or something. I, I, I know, but, but I don't trust the German car makers yet with making very efficient cars. I've seen, diff when it comes to efficiency in electric cars, you see other countries being, be being better, so they have to prove themselves. But I, but, but I really think they've turned over a leaf because they've done a very minimalistic design within the ID3 to save weight, I think. And I think that for a German car company is a bit different to what you traditionally expect. You traditionally I expect hope. lots of but, I mean, uh, I really this. I hope so you're right, but, but I have to see. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm scared that, they, 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 that, that the efficiency will be, will be good. It, it won't be horrible. With that kind of battery, I think it's fine. But I think that they, they, they thought more about the charging speed. They think about the... That's why what you hear in the advertising, uh, um, in 30 minutes, 260 kilometers of range. For them, it's important. When people say, oh, I have to want to go long range, if I have to charge in between and it's 200 kilometers away, I don't need half an hour to charge. That's what's important to them. Not that, 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 that if you drive like this, you can get 500 kilometers or so. Yeah, I, th I think it's more important nowadays, charging speed than the size of the battery. I think that will become more... I think right now it, it, it's a balance because uh, uh, most of chargers aren't that close. And you always have to think uh, when you have to charge, what I said before, does the charger work? You still have to drive there, back up, uh, open the charge port, use your card, plug it in, see if it works. Today at Ionity, uh, um, I charged four times. Every time I, I drive back, do the thing that I said, it takes two minutes. When you get off yeah. the highway and go off the, on the highway, it's five minutes. That's, it's, it's not a hassle, it's not horrible. But, but still, if you have to do that double the time because your battery is, 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 is small, and also when your car is charging well and your battery is small, 
that means you stand there for, for not even 10 minutes. What are you doing in 10 minutes? You can't go anywhere because the car is done. So you're practically not doing anything. When I did the Model 3 thousand kilometer run and it was charging only 13 minutes at, at some chargers with 190 kilowatt, I could, it was stressful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really stressful, uh, the live stream down, I have to film a bit and I have to drink, I have to eat, I can do that when I'm driving fast, so what else, the, uh, this was making sound, I have to uh, do this and, uh, and then, oh, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but uh, that's what really impressed me about the Tesla Model 3 and, uh, and your live stream on Sunday, I believe, yes, Sunday, yeah. was that you were you only stopping there for like 10 minutes, it, it, it's because somebody probably isn't used to an EV, the idea would be uh, you drive it down to like 10% and you charge it until it's like at 90% again. But it's like really, it's better to do these quick, short, sharp hits. That you have to know where the car, for, for if it's important to you to get to the destination as fast as possible, you have to know where is the car the most efficient in balance with the charging and you have to know where the charging speed is the best and for the model 3 it was under 10 percent to around 50 but the way i was driving i was driving fast with 50 percent i couldn't go 150 kilometers because i was doing above 180 kilometers an hour speeds and that's why that's why sometimes i had to charge to 60 percent but it amazing charging, amazing. I was I was so impressed, and and it, it worked every time. Just the first time, first charge was slow because I was at forty percent, and I wanted to arrive with ten. It just didn't take the power. It it I couldn't drive that fast because of construction. In the I had an average speed of hundred and forty seven on the first leg. But still, it used only 60% of its battery. <laughs> it's just amazing. I saw, I saw a video, I think, yesterday of some guy who cut up a Model Y battery and compared it to a Model 3 battery. I don't know if you've seen it. Um, oh. Perhaps I'll put a link in of it below. And um, basically, since the Model 3 battery, the batteries are the same, but there's been so many improvements from the Model 3 to Model Y in terms of wow. the, they've managed to use cheaper components, but at a better quality. Wow. And they've managed to change some things. So it's, it's, it's like their Tesla are always improving to make things cheaper and better. It's, 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 it's they're constantly looking at the, the most important part of the car, which is probably the batteries and the drive chain. And yeah. they're constantly trying to make it cheaper and better. They're making great cars and they're making good progress. You just have to believe in them. And I, I, I don't do that right now. I would ne not buy a, a Model 3 right now. First of all, it's not the car I need. It's too much. For me, it's too, 10,000 euro is too much money. This is my it's, problem. It's too much money. You get a lot for the 10,000 euros more. That's true. You get so much that no other EVs. It has the biggest wow factor of all EVs but uh, well, as I said in the video even in chill mode it was faster than most of uh, any EV that I, I drove so far yeah. so be faster than Ionic, Kona, ID3 I don't know what with 100, 150 kilowatt it was faster than this in chill mode and without chill mode it's sometimes scary as powerful as it is but the thing is I don't need it also <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. You don't. I even think it's dangerous for me to have a car with 500 horsepower and 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 with that power on on my foot if I have an angry day and I want to get home. I don't think that's that's good. <laughs> you, you 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 just put one of your metal tracks on loud and you're <laughs> wired. <laughs> no, no. Yes. And, and I I don't think is this is this just the car for me. What all all together how how it is and. And 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 the biggest thing is is was the the the, the seat, how you sit in there how you interact with the car, even though the voice control worked very well I tried it on the on the live stream. Overall, it it it's it, it's more a sportier car, and I, I don't think that's for me. One of them one of the things I saw when it wasn't for me the fully charged from his garden was it Rob or he he did a review twenty thousand mile review of uh -huh. it, or ten thousand yeah. and 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 he just opened the boot. And it just looks so impractical. I, I, I just like the idea, you know. Well, I mean, it's not like a hatchback booth. I like, you know, like the hatchback type. It, it, it's booth, it's you know, different, yeah. but I think a lot of stuff is fitting in there. If, if you need a lot of, of, of boot space, then I, I get it. I don't need that. So for me, this is not an issue. I'm, I'm not saying I need boot space. I just think I prefer the format of the, the hatchback. To that format. Yeah, me too. I like that yes. better. It, it, it's it's just the overall how how, how the car looks like and and uh, how it feels to drive. Like I said, with the sporty, not the lying in there very low, 
and, and all of this. The hatchback is just fits me better just to get in and not, not because I'm old or so. It's just easier to get in and easier to drive and do stuff uh, and, and, and on a daily basis. It was nice to drive the Model 3 for a day, but I don't think I would want that car to go to work every day. Because the um, one thing that puts me off the ear, probably to do my 120 kilometer trip, and even in the winter, because there's some hills, I'd probably have to charge it to 100% every day to have the ear up. With the ID3, my idea would be to charge it to like 60% every day. Uh, because some people say if you charge it to 100%, it's going to ruin the batteries quick. I, uh, I don't know if this is an issue or not. And when it's not that cold, I think the ear up could do that, even, even on the hill. Yeah, yeah. I think it could do that, the 120 kilometers, even if you go a bit faster. That should, that should be doable. When I did the test, it was, was cold, and, but I didn't have the heat on, and it had wind tires. I can't remember. But 150 kilometers at a range of at, at 130 kilometers an hour, I think that was okay. Ah, oh, so, so that'd be more than good enough. So if anyone from Portugal is listening and they drive like 120 kilometers to work and back, like I do, then the E-up should work. Should be, should work. <laughs> so, 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 so we're going to question that in the list. So what are the three top features you're most looking forward to in your ID3 first? Uh, what are those three? So something like this where I have to think right now. But I can tell you my three things. Like yes, yeah, that will be helpful. Yes. So, so the most important thing for me is adaptive cruise control. Because I hired a Golf like two years ago. It had adaptive cruise control. And it was amazing. <coughs> that was on a petrol Golf or diesel. I don't can't remember what it was. Um, the next thing, which I really think is going to be good for me, is the Hello ID. I'm always, I've, I've got a watch, I'm always speaking to my watch, and I think, you know, just being able to speak to the car. Um, hopefully it will work. I if won't that use works it. well, that would be good. Yeah. I would, I hate that stuff. Hello, Google. No, no, I'm not using that. If I can turn it off, I will turn it off. I'm, I'm expecting to say, hello, ID, um, anti-tank missile, hello, ID, eject, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next thing, which they've now confirmed in Portugal, because I'm only getting the ID free first, I'm not getting the plus, um, is the remote climate control from your phone, you know. So like in Portugal, when the car's in the sun in the summer, you're on the beach, it's very hot, you come back, you yes. can't even get in the car because it's boiling hot. If you can like set air conditioning 15 minutes before you get to the car, I mean, that will that's be, true. that's yeah, amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think for me it's it's all uh, uh, all the, the 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 positive things about the electric car. What you just said with uh, um, preheating in the morning or or cooling it in the afternoon and stuff like this, where it that feels such a uh, such luxury, but it's nice and it, it's not that hard to do with an electric car. That this is amazing. I what what I'm looking for are the 150 kilowatt power on the rear wheels because it felt amazing in Dresden and I think it will feel amazing on the road. Not like the Kona where you get spinning wheels. A bit worried that would be too much power for me. I've never had such a powerful car. The 150 kilowatt? Yeah, yeah. You get used to it very fast. Yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> uh, the, the, and, and the thing is, in, what I just said, in the Kona when you do it... And then you get spinning wheels or you get that... that what is it, a torque steer? When it, when it moves around and you feel like you're not in control, it, it, it turns you a bit off because then when you go around the corner and you're on your straight, you're like, can I really put it down? I don't know. And for example, in Model 3, you just can. It's fine. With all-wheel drive, with the weight, it just works. And I think the ID3 will be the same. You can put, floor it, I mean, unless it's against physics, but uh, it, it will, be, will feel more comfortable and more stable than other EVs and, and I'm looking forward to that and also how to interact with the car when you have internet connectivity when you do streaming when I can see on the phone what the car is doing that that will be nice yeah I think um, uh, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay for me will be a big thing as well because I've never had that that, that seems nice and uh, <laughs> um, I, I, I actually watched the review of Portuguese Volkswagen so it's a Portuguese guy and it's actually going through all the menus and we connect on the new Golf 8 well, basically, I think it's going to be exactly as the ID3, and the menus look really nice, really clear, and some okay. of the features look really nice and really clear on the on the Golf 8 because basically it's got the same center tablet, doesn't it? So, and I think that's the way it's going to look. I, I saw the the WeConnect app with the e app, and it worked horrible. But the oh. e app doesn't have the same internet connectivity than the ID3 will have. It's like an eSIM in there that maybe has 3G or 2G. 
and then of course when you send something it takes a minute till something happens yeah so it's just like dialing up a modem you can hear it exactly but the ionic that i have now it takes three seconds if to to send something but you're very limited but it works so if i can lock unlock uh, preheat pre-cool start charging stop charging and then when i press it it takes three seconds and then it does it yeah i, I think all you need is those basic features and it has to be quick yeah. Then to have lots and lots of features that are slow and, does, and they don't that's work. True. That's no, true. That's better. It could be because the ID3 doesn't have it or because it's in the Max, but what are the top three features you would love to have in the car? Well, I would which, have which, loved you don't to... have, which you don't have. Uh, I, I... I get the Plus and I would have loved the, the head-up display in there because that looks very interesting. But yeah. I didn't get it first because of the price. And I also thought, yes, head-up display sounds nice, but maybe after a month, I'm like, okay, I'm over it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it would just be nice to show. But the biggest thing here in Germany would be the heat pump. Yes, yes. It's, it's a shame that the heat pump in a, is not in a 40,000 euro electric car. That's uh, shameful. But, but is the heat pump something difficult to put? Could they like sell it as an extra afterwards that a Volkswagen and garage could? No. No, no, it's totally, it, it, it's too much. You, I'm sure you can do it somehow, but it costs more than selling your car and getting uh, getting an, an ID3 standard, so yeah. configuration, and you get the package with the heat pump. But heat pump, especially in, in, in Germany, when, you, when you're up north in Norway or even, even, even way north, when it's amazingly cold, then the heat pump uh, it doesn't do too much. But in Germany, when you have under 10 degrees to maybe minus 5 then the heat pump will be very efficient and and for a car where they're, they're talking about range and charging 260 kilometers in half an hour this would have been for me a, a standard thing for for all first at least first edition yes yes no, because yes. i think probably the sensible thing for me to do was wait and configure the perfect car for me at the price i want to pay but i just want the first this is having the first one you know it's like yeah. it's like a kid in a toy shop you know yeah. it's um that's what i'm doing at the first and then uh, i do leasing and then uh, if after a year or two I, I say no, I want something different in my ID3 or ID4 or what I, know, I don't know, then I get this. But um, So I'm going to come on to leasing next. So just to give you the three things I'd want in my, I would want in my ID3 first that I'm getting. It's the matrix ID lights that you get in the plus. Then the panoramic roof and the head up to the display. But um, for, for me, it's all out of the price range because I think it's like 7,000 euros difference in price from the first to the first plus. And for me, that makes it a bit too much out of range. So, and the yeah. max. Yeah. So, uh, the, 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 the LED uh, metri matrix was for me the, the selling point for, for, for the plus. Yes, yes. I want that. I want LED lights in the front. They, they turn off and I just have the high beams on and just go. It doesn't matter if there's a car or not. This is what I want. Because I'm probably a very bad driver because I always just put all the high beams on. I only realize when people flash me to turn them <laughs> off again. So, <laughs> so, so, so well, I, should, I should, should probably be obliged to have that. <laughs> then you don't need it anyways. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you're talking about buying or leasing. So, so my... I've done leasing in the past, and at least leasing in the past for me in Portugal has always worked out much worse than mm. buying. Because basically, you have to take the car back perfectly, and they like limit you to say you have to do 10,000 kilometers a year, but I want to do 25. If you have to do 25, you have to pay so much more, and and it's expensive to lease in. So my idea was to buy the ID3, but then there was some Irish guy. There was two people that put, made me think perhaps leasing with the ID3 is going to be the best option because. You spoke to, what's her name, Silky... Silky Bakshi. And there's an Irish gentleman, I don't know if he's in his site, called, I think, is it Bob or Rob Flavin? And he actually went to a Volkswagen presentation where they're saying for Ireland, where the ID3 first is 40,000 euros, they're saying if you want to get it leased and you put a 10% deposit, then you pay 409 euros a month for 36 months. And then you pay it after the 36 months. If you want the car, you pay 50% of the value. So the way I work this out is that you put down 4,000 euros deposit, you pay 14,724 euros for 36 months, then you pay 20,000 euros at the end, which makes the car 38,724 euros. So I don't know if there's a trick here, but that would make it cheaper than buying. Yeah. What huh. my, 
Isn't that weird? <laughs> yes. No, no, but I think there's a trick here, and I think it's to do with psychology, because I know everybody in the UK leases cars. That's um, true. Yeah. So I think what they want to do is, I think what they want to do is get like Portuguese guys and German guys and French guys to lease cars. And why is this? I think what's going to happen, you'll have that car for three years, then you'll suddenly decide that you want an ID4, or, or they're going to make the ID3, the lines a bit different, or you're really going to want the head up display. So that you're going to go to the garage, and you're paying your 499 euros a month. You go to the garage, say, oh, here's my 20,000 to put on the can. I say, hang on a minute, Mr. Marcus, instead of giving us the 20,000, why don't you have this ID3, this new one, and we're going to give you a bit of an offer with it. You, you know, perhaps you won't have to pay the deposit. Perhaps instead of 409, it's going to be 440. And they give you that. And you're in that psychology thing. I can have a new car. And it's going to cost, it cost me like 440 a month. And to keep my old car, I have to pay 20,000 euros. Am I crazy? And I'm pretty sure after three years that the ID3 going to sell it for 20,000 euros, they're going to put a Volkswagen second-hand approved car, one year's guarantee, and sell it for 25, 28, 29,000 euros. Possible. I mean, they're not doing it when they're losing money. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I think, so, so I think what it's going to do, it's going to make you keep buying Volkswagens, because I think they're going to give you a carrot, and it means that they're <laughs> not really selling the car for 40,000, they're selling it for like 45 or 50,000. So I think it's a win-win for them. I, I think that's the idea. So I'm actually thinking that perhaps this leasing is going to be better for everyone. And then at the end, you decide if you want to put the 20,000. Uh, I, I have to see what they, they offer me. She said in the interview that they want to, uh, uh, with leasing, they want to get some stuff in there that people say, yes, I want to do that. And I have to see that first. I want to calculate this. I'm not doing this just because she said so. So if they say, okay, this is you pay this, well, I say, I want to pay this much. How, how much is leasing if, if I want to do this for, for four years and I'm driving 25,000 kilometers a year? What are you offering me and, and what does the car cost? And then I will see. And if the offer is amazing with leasing, I do that. And if it's not, then I do I buy it. Just finance it, let's say, like that. I'm not, I can't put down 40,000 uh, 40, euros. I'm hoping that the leasing will be good. I don't know if you have this in Germany, but in Portugal, there's an app because everything's on the eMobi network. Mm -hmm. So it's different charging companies like petrol stations and things that, that have the chargers, but it's all on the eMobi network. And even the superchargers are on this app. So you've got an app which is telling you who's using the charger at the current time and for how long they've been using that charger for for all yeah. the chargers in portugal it only works in portugal the app's absolutely amazing so you can like click on a charger it will tell you who's using it how many people are waiting to use it and things like that and how long the oh. person has been using it so, so i was really i found this app the other day. i'll probably do um something about it it's really I mean, amazing i, I, I wouldn't want to uh, want anyone know where i'm charging right now so but but the rest sounds nice. If if I know that there are five people charging there, that would be interesting. I don't need to know who it is. No no no. no. So, so so it doesn't tell you who it is. It's just saying. Yes, it's, it's just saying like there's a car on this charge and they've been there for one hour, or there's a car okay. on this charge they've been That's there for nice. ten minutes. So 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 for example, if you know it's like a fifty kilowatt charge and they've been there for five minutes, you think, mm, well, I'll probably try another one. If That's they've been true. like for an hour, you think, well, I'll go and risk it, you know, or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure right now not, but in 10 years, this is standard. Yes, it has to be. This will be. be total standard. You click on the charger and it tells you what you just said. Yes. And then you decide, do I do this? Or, the, or, or even the car will decide and say, no, don't, I won't use this charger because... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so we're nearly coming to the end of the questions. Perhaps it's been too too long. Um, but but I've been really enjoying it, so I can go on. Right. But, um, so, so the next question is obviously this will not happen. But um, let's just say Volkswagen turn around and say, unfortunately, we've, the, 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 there's some big problem, and we can only give you the car in the summer 2021. <laughs> Would you cancel your order? No, I won't cancel, and it won't happen. What? I'm scared of, and, and Volkswagen is scared of, that it won't happen in this summer. Uh, they're working hard on that, and, 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 and they try to achieve the summer. But, and, and like I always say, summer goes till the mid of, of September. Um, and I think how, how, I don't know if they can do it. I hope so. The, the, the ordering now with, with June 17th is a bit too late for me because we were always promised ordering will be in March or April. So we're already two, two and a half months late. So if they say summer, and, and I think before they wanted to achieve to get the, 
car out for the for the for the soccer European Championship, which which should have been in July. And when I see the delay of two and a half months, that means the end of September. I like my videos to be a bit controversial. <laughs> because it'd be, because I like people to leave me bad comments. I have five on somebody saying, "Oh no, no, you're talking rubbish or this or that," you know. And so um, I want to be a bit controversial. So, so you, you actually gave me the idea in one of your videos. I'm, I'm going to blame you totally for this. Okay. You said as soon as they open the ordering window, you you order your car and within two weeks you'll get it. So this gives me the impression that that <laughs> the, I'm sure the, you said that. Was... That was very long time ago, and this was, I, I believe, the dealer. The dealer told me, so how Volkswagen does it all the time, and, and, and this is how I learned that, that the dealers have no idea and Volkswagen is doing something totally new. But back then, he had, had the opinion, because of all the other cars, when a new car is coming out, at some point Volkswagen will open the ordering books, and two to four weeks later, or maybe six weeks, the car will be delivered and this is what what he told me and 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 even back then then he thought that ordering will start in september when they they, they had the world premiere so he had no idea I, I don't trust him when it comes to this at all i know more about the id3 than he does he even didn't know about the the the, the june 17th until i emailed him oh okay so, no, yes. no. <laughs> uh, uh, um and and uh, I know from Volkswagen as a, from my I don't have a spy in Volkswagen by the way he's just a very nice guy who invited me to 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 the ID3 pre-booking event and I'm in contact with him all the time he doesn't know everything he's not in the construction or in the development he just hears stuff in there and he just tells me stuff that he's allowed to tell someone so he's not telling me anything that that nobody knows but uh, he just uh, and I asked him uh, about the whole thing, and he says they're working on it. It's 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 still hard, it's a lot of work, and they want to make it uh, at, in the summer, and they needed to make make it for the summer because of all the the problems with the EU and the whole CO two thing. But it's not a sure sure thing. Because, so I, because I had my heart set on July the twenty second. So. Uh, <laughs> nah, never. So it it won't be surely. Not before September. Yeah, so, so uh, September for me actually works. I won't be too disappointed <laughs> if it was September. That's, that's the second, but the third would be okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to come in August. Well, I did plan on going on holiday, but I don't think I'll be able to go on holiday now because uh, of COVID. Thing. I'm not sure about that, but anyway. If, if they're done with the car, with the software before... I mean, when is the software done? It, it, it's very, very hard never to done, say. is it? Exactly. And, and I think what they will do, they will try to fix the thing in a way that people, when they go in, don't have a bad experience. And if when they achieve that, and it's, it, it's before... September, so it's still in the summer. So, so let's say they ha they're done with this in July. I think they will still be make sure, maybe improve it a bit, maybe uh, uh, put some more in it, or, or just to be sure. And then they, they rather wait a month and it's still summer and the car is better than before. Uh, before they, 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 they're not Tesla, they're not okay, the car is done out, and you deal with it if there's something wrong with it. They, they want to make it the complete opposite. You get the car when it's when it's the way that Volkswagen thinks it should be, and this is the problem right now. That's why it's not out. I'm pretty sure everything works, just not perfectly. So when you press this button and then up here, then it doesn't show internet streaming it, it shows it in a weird graphic and the connection to this module doesn't work the, always the way that it should i think this is the problem yes, yes. but um, but 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 if you look at like the, the may last year they always promised it for the summer this year so even if it comes in september october it's not a very long delay it's you know theory it's like two or three months late and for software that's nothing yeah in terms and of i don't mind the delay I, I, i'm, I'm yes. the wrong I, I want the car yes but uh, the delay uh, makes me uh, save up more to pay in front. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that, that's... that's true. Uh, I think it's been amazing. I don't have any more questions. Don't you've got any questions <laughs> for me. If you, if you, if if, if uh, I know that you're currently testing the Ionic, so there's something for us to look forward to. Your great reviews of the Ionic, yes. um, and many people may be interested in that. So I'm definitely going to leave your link below so definitely su to subscribe to um chris uh, today i've got my first 100 su subscribers so Whoa, I can have a special cool. day. 
So, 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 so I've had an amazing special guest and 100 subscribers. So, uh, <laughs> That's it's, great. It's, <laughs> I'm not uh, that special. But, well, well to, to me, you are. <laughs> For this oh, channel, you're you. special. So, yes, yes. Um, so, and then, and I think I can only top you if I can get like Elon Musk on this channel, but I'm not sure that's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you, he gets them. You get to get them at all anywhere. Yes, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's been very informative this talk. I've really enjoyed it. I think we've learned a bit more about me, a bit more about you, and um, the, um, a bit more about the car as well. So um, it's been great for my channel. Hopefully, you've enjoyed it speaking to me. And no, perhaps we can nice. keep going once we get the cars and um, have yeah. an opinion or something. That'd be yeah. great. Great. Yes, that's true.